Hey all viewers and viewers, my name is John Red Strategist. Welcome back to Say Being Haunted, episode 329 now. So, back here of course on the East Island. I'm going to continue on here for a little bit, I do think. Scored another 80 points or whatever it is in the last episode, just from Rule Britannia and all that. But, we still need to explore buildings, if possible. If the riders will let us, that is. Because they are spawning, and they're going to be a bit of an issue. Because of course, they patrol right down the centre of the bloody islands. Which just makes it a little bit inconvenient for me. And also there's bloody squires in the villages. God, this pacifism rule really makes things difficult. You know that? You know that person who recommended this, whose name I've forgotten? I've forgotten who it was. I can make a guess, but uh, I, I've completely forgotten. I think it was your mum's rolling pin, wasn't it? You happy your mum's rolling pin? You can't make me kill anybody? Or you making me not kill anybody? Whatever I'm trying to say. Before I start mixing up my lines, everybody. Ah, so as usual, I hope you guys out there are all doing very well. I certainly am. And um, like I said in the last episode, you know, I'll be keeping this challenge going for at least a few more episodes. Seeing how it goes. Um, but, it's, you know, eventually it'll probably reach a point where I decide to wrap things up and maybe move on to a new one. I don't know. Because that's the thing. Because I think there's only so many times I can sort of wonder about these islands trying to get to buildings whilst the robots are not looking before eventually people think, ah, time for a new challenge now, Red. Move on, you bastard. That's uh, precisely what they say in a nice friendly YouTube comment. Red, move on, you bastard. That's what they tell me in a Scottish accent, as they do. So, uh, I think I said, obviously, in the last episode, didn't I? Um... I'm back down south now. I was uh, up north for a little bit with friends and family visiting. Two weeks, exactly, I was up for. And um, yeah, it was a good relaxing time. Did a few things, visited a few places, saw a few people. It's very nice. But on top of that, I got my hands actually as well. I mean, this, <laughs> you'd think I'd be about to talk about the things I did um, whilst I was back up north, but. Uh, I actually uh, managed to get a free little dab radio off my old folks. They were trying to get rid of them. They thought, oh, you know, red. Uh, uh, well, they don't call me red, obviously, but <laughs> they were like, oh, you know, you can have it. So I have it now. It's on my shelf in my room. I've got some shelves, actually, for my flat to go in my lounge, just to add something to it. Because otherwise my lounge is a bit of a bare thing. That's the problem with this... The problem with living in this rental flat is that I'm not allowed to put things on the walls. Not like... I can't put pictures or anything like that. So, there's only... And the thing is, when the when I first rented this flat, by default, it actually only came with one set location in the lounge where you could hang up a picture. And I put something on there, but obviously it just means that, you know, a lot of the walls look fairly bare. So instead, you have to try and fill up the room with pieces of furniture. And, you know, I've got my armchairs, my sofa. I mean, technically, they're not mine. They came with the flat. But um, they're in there, and I've got, you know, a few then pieces of furniture of my own, like some little shelves, things like that, with some stuff on them. And recently I got some uh, proper... I mean, I already had a bookshelf in the room, but um, I managed to get a couple more. Some nicer, bigger ones. And so I put them in there, it just adds a bit more of a feature to the room, which is fantastic. Absolutely what I needed. Uh, at the moment they're a bit there, I've just got to uh, maybe uh, get some more of my books on them fill them up a little bit, make them look occupied. But, you know, I'm thinking about getting some more stuff in due course that I'll put on them, so maybe some ornaments or whatever. But, um, like I say, I've got my hands on a little dab radio now, so that's now on one of those shelves. It's nice sometimes, just to plug it in and just uh, switch it on. Because the thing is, you can automatically tune it to a variety of stations. Okay, we've got some more Chucky Bickies, aka Crackers. Um, I need to remember how many points they were worth. They remember they're worth ten points. There is a fucking rider coming. Hold on. Just gonna identify where that guy's coming from before anything else. Because the last thing I want is for him to. Oh, he's there. That's where he is. Okay, well, he's going in a different direction. Let me just add the ten points on there. Ten. There we go. They're added. See, so, yeah, I got my little dab radio. It's on my shelf. It's nice. Tune it into Classic FM because you know. And culture and all that. <laughs> but yes, uh, put in Classic FM. Just nice to have that playing in the background when I'm uh, doing a bit of work or whatever. It's just a bit of company, because that's the thing, you know, living on your own, it can get a bit lonely sometimes. So I've got that. That's fantastic. It's absolutely lovely. I'm very grateful for it. There's another pub there that actually we can probably go to in the water. 
hoping that the old sea beast doesn't show up and try and eviscerate me as I do. Maybe I should go and investigate that village there, because it looks like that hunter may be leaving, I hope. Because he may be going with his friends down there. Okay. Or not, he's turned around and he's coming back. What an asshole. Okay. Just when I thought I could maybe uh, go and investigate. Now, I was told that this might be possible to actually clear out this pub before the sea beast appears. Because when he first appears in the water, when you're in there, typically that's not too much of an issue. Because you can actually um, evade him. And the stairs at the front of the pub should be accessible. And they should be a place to stand on. Which then counts as though you're on sort of dried ground, I think. Um, right, let's just stock up on a few alcohol bits and bobs. Don't know why I'm doing that. Well, I guess I'm getting them because it gives me bottles, which I can use to distract enemies. Oof. There's a fair amount of stuff in there. Stout's probably the best one, just because you don't seem to get drunk off it. You know, Phil was asking me about that the other day. He was talking to me when I uh, was visiting him while I was back up north. He was saying, why is it that the stout doesn't make you drunk? What's that about? Because it's alcoholic, isn't it? So what's what's the deal with that? How very peculiar. Need to watch out, there is a freaking poacher in here somewhere. I can just vaguely hear him off in my right ear. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. It's just the choice that Big Robot made, and that's that. Don't question it, ladies and gents. Okay, but yeah. Talking about my dab radio, of course, wasn't I? So I've got that, that's very nice. Got it tuned into Classic FM. The one thing I am sick of hearing on there, though, is the... Um, the little usual announcement that they play on every commercial break where they're talking about coronavirus basically you know government advice all that sort of thing and they have this character who te speaks on it is michael the delivery driver or whatever he is here's michael the delivery driver from such and such a place I was talking about coronavirus. I realised I've got to take precautions and all that. I've got to not go near my family. I've got to shut myself in a little bubble, little plastic bubble, shut myself away, shoot anybody who come near me. Well, actually, he doesn't say that, but, you know, it'd be funnier if he did, wouldn't it? Ooh! Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Well, never mind. <laughs> Just had an awkward moment where I was peering at him. Dur, 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 dur. Don't mind me, just investigating. Do, do you mind? Do you have to? Do you really have to? Oh, God. That's dedication to fighting cheese and whatever else have you. Hello. Let's lead him on. Whoa! <laughs> oh, 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 that's bad. Oh, 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 the challenge might be about to end. Shit, go over here. I got cocky. I got too cocky, ladies and gents. I got way too cocky. Shit. Balls. Bollocks. Great big nutsacks. Oh dear. Well, that didn't go too well. I should have just run. I got cocky because, you know, the amount of times I've dealt with hunters before and been okay. Alright. Load last save. Well, the challenge... Is it, oh dear. Trust me to fuck it up in the best possible way. I'll tell you what we'll do. Since the challenge is over right here, right now, let's tot up how many points we did accumulate there. I know technically, at the end of the challenge, I was supposed to scoff all the Chucky Bickies and Stilton Cheese at the very end. Not going to happen, but... Um, we can still tot up how many points we accumulated, because good lord, there's an absolute mass of them here. Got it all tallied down on this sheet, and it's pretty crazy. So, let's have a look at what we got. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, 115, 120, 125, 130, 135, 140, uh, 145, 150, um, 155, 160. Oh shit, I've lost count where I'm up to already. Fuck! Okay, hold on. 
<laughs> My bad. Hold on, let me just... Shit. Let me just start again. Okay, right, 5, 10, 15, 20, uh, 25... Uh, 30, 35, 40. Okay, so let me just cover those with my finger so I realise that I've uh, counted those already. Um, so where are we up to? 40. 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, 110, 115, 120, 125, 130, 135, 140, 155, uh, 145 even, 150, 155, 160. Uh, 170, 175, 180, 185, 190, 195, 200, 205, 210, 215, 220, uh, 225, uh, 230, 235, 240, 245, 250, 255, 260, 265, 270, 275, 280, 285, 290, 295, 300, 305, 310, 315, 320, 325, 330, 335, 340, 345, 350, 355, <laughs> 355, um, where are we, 360, 365, 370, 375, 380, 385, 390, 395, 400, 405, 410, 415, 420, 425, 430, 435, 440, 445, 450, <laughs> 455, 460, uh, 465, 470, 475, 480, 485, 490, 5, uh, 495, 500, 505, 510, 515, 520, 525, 530 points, ladies and gents. Man, we got a lot. And I imagine that quite uh, the overwhelming majority of those were probably from... Oh, God, I guess from my tape. Well, probably from uh, listening to Squires singing Rule Britannia, were they not? Okay, well, you know what? 530 points. I think it's a good one. So we had a good run with this challenge. We did relatively well, I do think, even if ultimately we died in the end. So you know what? We'll, we'll put that as the total, ladies and gents. Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> Hope you're all doing very well, then. Hope you all enjoyed that, ladies and gents. Might as well wrap up the episode here, I guess. I mean, it's going to be a bit of a shorter one, but yeah, it'll be fine, I do reckon. I think we've done at least somewhere in the region of 10 to 15 minutes, I think, right about there. Man, I was going to talk a lot about frigging, uh, you know, stuff that's going on down here in the meantime, but I guess um, that's going to have to wait till the uh, next episode then, ladies and gentlemen. So, Wallace and Gromit Challenge officially over, in which case um, maybe uh, the next couple of episodes might just be podcast style episodes where I'll just sort of wander around and we'll have a chat we'll have a nice uh, leisurely chat about various things and whatever else have you um, and then after that I think we'll probably uh, start up a new challenge because obviously I've got my big list I'll have a look over it pick out something that uh, takes my fancy or whatever else have you or alternatively you know as usual um, feel free to leave your own challenge suggestions down below um, keep them coming as usual because obviously it just means I can keep the series going uh, for longer and longer, which, you know, incidentally I would do normally, because obviously I can just find topics to talk about and do podcast-style episodes and whatever else have you. Okay, right, um, other than that then, I might as well wrap up here. So, this was uh, General Red, episode 329 of Sir You Being Hunted. We failed the challenge, or rather we died, but we got 530 points along the way, which I, you know what, I'm proud of. I think it's good. It'll do me just fine. It'll do me just fine, Donkey. So yeah, Facebook and Twitter links down below, along with a link to my propagandist channel for anyone interested. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. But in the meantime, signing off now. Goodbye, everybody. What is that going on over there? I have never seen that before, so we're going to go towards that. My health is not brilliant at the moment. My bloody inventory is jam-packed full of stuff. Ooh! Ooh! What? What is this, the fucking Eye of Sauron or something? Ow! What the hell? I found the Eye of Sauron, everybody! Don't go all Lord of the Rings up in this stuff. I need my friggin' uh, thingy bobbers on so I can climb up here. What the hell is this thing? Oh, fuck off, Snake Man. What is this thing and what does it do? Oh! God, there's bloody monsters everywhere. This is kind of bad. I don't know what this is.